Well, it's really a bit of a two-way street. So ethics and human rights can benefit blockchain by utilizing some of the insights that moral philosophers have had over thousands of years. We see some of the questions emerging now um, in the blockchain industry surrounding regulation or uh, the carbon footprint of the proof of work um, mechanism, things like this. And people might be wondering, how do they approach this question? And um, what I would like to, to input is that you can use some of the ethical frameworks and apply them to those questions. Now the other way around is that blockchain can be immensely useful in furthering ethical and human rights uh, causes. So the United Nations has an office of 50 some people I believe uh, working precisely on this and we see examples where blockchain can be used to grant uh, refugees digital uh, documents that they might have lost if they were in paper form. Uh, massively increase the efficiency of aid work um, and track the provenance of uh, do otherwise dubious things like blood diamonds, for example. Uh, so really it goes both ways. I think, first of all, the efficiency and the increase in speed and scale. So my background is in uh, medical ethics. We have a big problem with sharing medical data for, for research purposes. And I think this, for example, is, is a case where blockchain could be very, very helpful. Uh, also the timestamping function, where you can see and prove pretty much unequivocally when something has been tampered with or when something has been done. Uh, so for example, in, in clinical trials, there is often a case where the researchers might change a protocol um, at a later stage and fail to let the participants know or fail to publish this in their article which can lead to all kinds of biases in the statistical analysis. And one way to uh, approach this would be to use the time stepping function of blockchain. I think so. So a big problem right now is just the sheer scale of it. So if we imagine the, not the kind of transactions that are shared in Bitcoin, for example, it's really not a very large file size for each block. But if you imagine the kind of data that is now being used and processed in medicine, genetic data, genomic data, proteomic data, metabolomic data. This is up to terabytes per person. So I think at the moment it's feasible to use blockchain for things like data access management, granting permissions, uh, or some of the things I mentioned earlier with timestamping efficiency and so on. But in the future, if we can somehow scale up the amount of data uh, or the memory that can be transmitted via the blockchain, I think that would be even a whole other level. So I don't think that Bitcoin is evil and um, I also don't think that the blockchain technology underlying it is evil. Uh, some people say that it's not the technology that's evil, it's how people use it. But I think this is actually a case that demonstrates that um, certain technologies can lean more towards good applications or to negative applications. And I think some of the functions of blockchain or that it enables, such as transparency and distributed consensus, taking, uh, disintermediating uh, some of the power sharing structures that otherwise inhibit the sharing of data and important data and value. Um, so I think the opposite actually, I think blockchain can be a powerful force for good.